What is good, everybody? Today we are back with brand new WWE action figure news, man. News coming in hot and often because we are in San Diego Comic-Con season, as we've touched on multiple times, man. We are in the heat of San Diego Comic-Con season, which does mean that we're going to have a lot more figure reveals, a lot of figures going to be being released, a lot of figures shipping out, things leaking, things being revealed, all kinds of things leading up to the big day, which will be San Diego Comic-Con. Now, I can't wait for San Diego Comic-Con, but today we're going to be diving into a brand new WWE Elite Wave, which we knew was coming, but we have brand new images of the full wave, and I have a lot of stuff to discuss about it and I want to get your thoughts on it so let's buckle the hell up. Today man we're going to be diving into WWE Elite Series 111 and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about it so let me know down in the comment section below. So let's shut the hell up and dive into the first figure man. It is going to be the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Love Cody Rhodes man he has another banger figure right here man. Every single figure this guy gets it seems is such a good one. His formula is pretty much damn perfect and we're going to discuss the figure man. Starting out first we do have this white gear that looks so damn clean. We did see this back at Wrestlemania 40 on display and it is such a damn good gear. I love this gear. I think it looks fantastic. Now this is great because you know with the torn pet Cody or the defining moments Cody it was a white attire you know half white half blue and that is an attire that I wanted to remove the torn pet and it's still something I want to do with the collection right. I want to take the Cody Rhodes and flip it to remove the torn pet so you have a Cody Rhodes in that gear without the torn pet and it looks similar to this. This is about what you would expect it to look like sort of. I know the attire is not completely accurate but it is very similar. It's a white base. You have some gold, some blue, some red accents, and this is about what it would look like. Now, we do have a new head sculpt going on right here. It's kind of like a pursed lips head sculpt, and we saw this back at Mania. Not the biggest fan of the head sculpt. I do like the screaming expression. Even though we have seen the screaming expression a few times now, I still like it. It may be a bit oversized at times, but I don't hate it. One thing I don't like about the figure, though, is going to be they continue to put the damn tattoo on the head sculpt. I don't know how many times we need to say this. All you have to do is just remove the logo from the face at all because there is a gap between his ear and the top of the tattoo, man. I've documented it here. I've talked about it on Instagram. I've talked about it, man. There is a gap. Remove it from the head sculpt for obvious reasons. First of all, it's not that close to the ear. Secondly, when you move the head, it breaks it up and it makes it look very weird. And I know you can acetone it off, but I think they could even benefit from either you either have to put a cut right under the ear, like, a, like where the jaw can be defined. And Cody Rhodes has a defined jaw, so it would absolutely work. You could put a little divot in there similar to the Supreme, and I'll try to find images of what I'm talking about. You can cut out the plastic right there and the full tattoo will fill in that gap and it'll look perfect. We've seen it on the Jazzwares figures. It can be done. It needs to be done. It's one of those things that's very obnoxious. It's just there's no point in it. People comment on it all the time. It's just an odd choice. It's a very simple fix. Remove it from the face. Leave it on the neck. I think it would do wonders for the figure and you can just acetone it off but I don't think that's necessary and I, I like it definitely looks better when you acetone it off but I think it would take it a step further if they would you know adjust it a little bit you know I think the size is fine. It looks fine. But having that tattoo on the face is just ridiculous. But I love this gear. I like this Cody a lot. I love Cody Rhodes. I love these gears. It's a great looking figure. I think a great fix up would be putting some different boots on here. We're going to definitely do all the fix ups on action figure surgery. But having another Cody, never going to get a complaint from me. Love his figures. Love Cody. The figures are great. This one should be fun. But I don't know how I feel about the pierced head sculpt. I'm going to change it probably. Still think they should have included the defining moments head sculpt. I don't know why they aren't reusing that. It's perfect paint apps. Perfect paint apps. You the defining moments head sculpt there's something about it. it just looks perfect it's money but getting new cody Rhodes head sculpts would be nice to see at san diego comic-con next up in the set man we're going to be talking about sandman now sandman is a guy i cannot stress this enough sandman is one of the guys i've wanted in mattel wwe action figure form for so long it cannot be overstated how long i've waited on sandman you go back to the early days of the fed he was one of the guys on the og roster I love Sandman. Always been a big fan of him. I love the charisma of the guy. I've always liked just, I don't know. I, I just think he's he's bad A, man. He's always been one of my favorites from a kid till now. He's awesome. And I think this figure even looks good men on cards. He's got, he's holding the kendo stick. The barbed wire is wrapped around him. You have all the beer cans right there. I mean, soda. Looks like he could tag team partner with Rex Kwon Do. It's called Rex Kwon Do. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. Give me your best shot. Grab my arm. The other arm. My other arm. Jeez. Do it again. Ouch. Okay. Do you think anybody wants a roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys? 
But this figure looks great. And actually, the head sculpt looks a lot better than I was thinking it would. At least at WrestleMania, it looked a bit weird. But here, it looks pretty good, man. I don't mind this head sculpt. I'm definitely going to be picking up multiples of this guy to make some different fix-ups. Just having this head sculpt. And the Jax head sculpt was good by itself. But having an official Sandman is huge. It is an ECW Sandman, which is great. You know, it's not a revamped ECW version, but I think that's fine. I think a lot of people probably prefer it that way anyway. But I like the Sandman, you know. I will say, I do have to call it out in terms of... I hate the Mankind Shane McMahon sweatpants mold hate that mold and I hate this damn shoe mold this Cena shoe mold it <laughs> appears three times in this wave and it makes me want to vomit okay this Cena shoe mold and I know a lot of people are going to talk about it, it's not that big of a deal it actually is it actually is kind of a big deal because this shoe mold right here is 14 years old in two years this shoe mold can drive a car legally okay they got to get rid of this they got to get rid of this Cena shoe mold we need a new shoe mold as a sneaker guy I do love the fact that they included the look of a kamikaze Reebok sneaker. I think that's amazing. Hats off to Mattel for including that detail of the kamikazes. But I have to call it out right there. I would like to have a version of Sandman with the barbed wire arm tattoo and everything, but I will take this, and I know that he's the chase variant. So you do have the different versions. You have the Rex Quando. Ouch. And then you have, you know, the black and white gear or the skull pants, or whatever you want to call it. And I like both of them. I'm going to be grabbing both of these easily. I'm going to be making some different Sandmans, man. I, I love Sandman. D definitely going to be, you know, taking a crack at different versions. I love the barbed wire, though. Love the kendo stick. It comes with a shish ton of accessories. This is exactly what you want out of a, out of a Sandman. I'm hoping we get some basic or main event style figures. Hope we get them in a championship showdown. A dream would be to have an ultimate edition of him. I'm not going to hold my breath on that. This, you know, when, when they make guys the chase, it's usually a sign that they're not going to have a figure for a while. Usually, that does is the case unfortunately we will have to see about that you know nothing's confirmed maybe we'll see some more sandman figure reveals at san diego comic-con but this popped me hard I, I this was one of my favorite reveals at wrestlemania 40 and just having a sandman is very just surreal i guess you could say and i'm very much looking forward to more sandman releases but yeah i had to talk about everything about this figure man that damn shoe mold sucks but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out we're gonna figure it out but it is fun to see sandman finally in the line after waiting so very long and the head sculpt looks a lot better here than it did originally when i saw it so this should be fun. Hopefully when we get it in hand, it'll take another step forward. But let's move on to the next figure in the set, which is going to be none other than Ricochet. Now, Ricochet, he is on his way out more than likely, right? I think he is on his way somewhere else, but it doesn't matter because this figure right here is a great one to leave out on. You know, we've gotten we've had, you know, a Ricochet with double jointed arms before, but I would say that this Ricochet is better than that Ricochet. It's better than the Elite 101. It's a damn good Ricochet. I would say from the head to the knees, it's a perfect figure and then we have the damn Johnny Gargano Syndrome strikes again here, man. Unfortunate, unfortunate. All the people tagging me always appreciate the tags on these posts when these Johnny Gargano Syndrome figures are revealed. But I will say, Johnny Gargano Syndrome, uh, uh, you know, I'll get into that in just a second. This figure, from the head to the knees, is amazing. What a great pick for gear. What a great entrance gear. I think you could put that on multiple guys who make some fantasy attires. I already have an idea of what I'm going to do. He doesn't have pinless legs, so that means you can switch out the lower legs. I have an idea for some fix-ups we're going to play around with on surgery on what kick pads and what I want to do with the feet there, but there are multiple things you can do, but having a double jointed, really articulated ricochet in this gear is fantastic, and there's actually multiple things you can do here, and we're going to talk about it right now, but I love everything about this ricochet outside of the Johnny Gargano syndrome. You guys know he has the new improved ricochet Kawhi Leonard entrance hands. They have improved those. They're smaller now. Still going to refer to them as that ricochet Kawhi Leonard mold, unfortunately, but it is, you know, it, it is an improvement, but I like the entrance gear, but let's get down into the knees and the lower legs, Johnny Gargano. Gargano syndrome. Some of you may not know what Johnny Gargano syndrome is, and I probably need to make a whole separate video on it, but it's when they pretty much make the kick pad boot mold. They make it the size of traditional wrestling boots, and it's inaccurate. You know, it's it, if you look on guys, I don't think there's anybody in this wave that has it correct, but you go to guys like Seth Rollins and stuff, the kick pads go to right below the knee pad, so there shouldn't be that large gap there. It shouldn't look like traditional boots. It just doesn't look right. It's not accurate. I'll do a whole video on that one day, I'm sure, but you can actually switch the lower legs out of this with a few different figures. You could do it with AJ Styles is what I'm thinking because AJ Styles leg mold, his lower leg mold is pretty short. So if you take like an old Elite 56 AJ Styles in the blue gear, there's multiple blue gear AJ Styles, but if you take that figure and you switch the lower legs of this with that ricochet, you could put a, like a shish ton of different kick pads in there and you could take your pick really, but even if you don't want to switch the lower legs, if you just swap the boots out for just traditional white wrestling boots, you know, Ricochet has done that before. You could probably even do that and make a really cool fix up. We're going to play around with it, but this Ricochet does look damn 
good, all things considered. Still hype for the figure, still think it looks amazing, but Johnny Gargano Syndrome still surviving in 2024 is just absurdity, man. God in heaven, but this figure does look beautiful, though. God, just gotta rid ourselves of Johnny Gargano Syndrome. Yeah, yeah, we gotta, we gotta start a campaign out here. Next up on the set, we're gonna be talking about my man Finn Balor. You guys know, if you're, if you're around the channel at all, you know I love Finn Balor, and I, I do really love Finn Balor. One of my favorite current talents on the planet, but God in heaven. And this figure's not the worst of all time. I do like the gear and the moment they chose, but if you go back to his last figure in Elite 107, I never liked this leg mold because it starts in Elite 98 with his demon Finn Balor. They switched his legs from his own muscular leg mold, and then they switched it to this Daniel Bryan leg mold, and that created him to be much shorter than the rest of his elites. Fast forward to Elite 107, they switched him to his Judgment Day gear, which is in this, you know, this joggers look, and they gave him these tiny legs, and I know Finn Balor's not a giant of some sorts, but his legs are not skinny and tiny like this, you know, they give him these little boy legs, and he looks tiny, and then, you know, you put him in these pants, and now, this is the traditional mold now, this is what they're rolling with, so now it won't be changed, it's gonna continue to be this until Finn Balor breaks out on his own, or switches his gimmick up until he goes back to regular trunks, he's gonna stay in this mold, so it's like every Finn Balor that comes out, it's like, damn, he's too short, or God in heaven, now it's just all messed up, but I still love the gear, I love the jacket, it is kind of a repaint of that previous figure, I like that they have the custom J's in there, even though, you know, they can't put the swooshes, whatever, but it's the same damn John Cena shoe mold, unfortunately, still need to get rid of that, as we've stated already in this video, it's a terrible foot mold, he doesn't have any shin cut, as we know, he is gonna have ankle cut, and he can rotate his foot, but it's just something to, to definitely talk about, the articulation will be fine, I like the gear and everything, I think this is from SummerSlam, if I'm not mistaken, when he took on Seth Rollins, I could be wrong about that, but that's why he's got the seven there on his shoulder, but this head sculpt is what we have to talk about, this head sculpt is like five years old or something at this point, they used it on the Elite 70 Finn Balor back in the day, which was one of the biggest WWE Elite figure disappointments, since I've been collecting, it was one of my least favorite releases ever in terms of disappointment, and you're thinking, oh, it's Jack the River, Demon Finn Balor, yeah man, but you don't know, you don't know the disappointment there, because it had so much potential, and there were so many things wrong with that figure, but the head sculpt, like the growling demon face isn't the problem, it's that it's just so old, that figure had problems outside of the head sculpt, it wasn't really the head sculpt, it was the, the paint apps of the figure that really disappointed me, but here with this figure, we've seen this head sculpt for a long time, we've seen it on multiple basics before, and the beard length isn't correct, it's just not an accurate representation of him, and it's such an old head sculpt, I don't know why we're still using this head sculpt, Finn Balor desperately, must, much like Roman Reigns, I have been, even longer than Roman Reigns, I have been begging for a Finn Balor faded taper beard for like six or seven years now. It's kind of ridiculous. I think it's six years, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's about 20, I think beginning of 2018 or something like that. Maybe the end of 2017. Been waiting on a faded taper beard. Hasn't happened yet, so hopefully at San Diego Comic-Con we'll finally get to see that. It's just not accurate. It's very old, and they're reusing a lot of stuff here that I just am not a personal fan of, so that is disappointing. But it is a, it's a Finn Balor. I'm gonna grab it. We're gonna review it on the channel. We'll see, but it's just these things that continue to happen that I would like to see change, man. They could be so much better, and those are things that I would like to see here, but we do have a cool jacket in there as well. I love Finn Balor, so of course I'm gonna be hyped to get a new figure of him, but these certain things, and it'd be different if I could just switch it, but it's very, it, some of these things are not just, you know, very simple to switch around and change, so, you know, if it's a bad head sculpt, like the head sculpt doesn't bother me as much as the legs and the shoes, because I could easily just, you know, pop a new head sculpt on there, even though there is no Mattel head sculpt that's equivalent to what I would like it to be, eh, it's just a whole damn thing, man, Jesus. Let's move on to our next figure, man, we're gonna be getting into Tony D'Angelo, man, Tony D'Angelo, they did this man dirty, all right? I will say there's a few different things here that I like about this figure, which we're going to get into. First of all, the head sculpt, pretty solid. I'd say it's a pretty solid head sculpt. I love the cloth goods jacket. I will never complain about cloth goods. They look good. And not only does he get a cloth goods jacket, he gets a cloth goods, you know, white tank top, which is awesome. Not only that is if you look at these legs, this is a brand new sweatpants mold. We finally have new sweatpants right here. I don't think we've ever seen these legs. These are brand new legs to my knowledge. This is not the Shane McMahon sweatpants. This isn't the Mankind sweatpants. These are are brand new sweatpants with added, you know, bagginess to them. They have like a little bit of thickness to them. They are different. They are different. And I think these legs would look a lot better on a Mankind. I could probably see them releasing maybe a new Mankind or a Greatest Hits figure or something like that, adding to Mankind and making it more accurate. But God in heaven, switch to shoe mold. Yet again, we're seeing another John Cena shoe mold right here. Another one that I can't stand. It's just good Lord in heaven, man. Another John Cena shoe mold in this wave. Three figures out of this wave have the John Cena shoe mold, which means they're going to fall flat on their face. If those get loose, it's over with, man. And I know you could say that about it a lot, but these shoes just don't ever pose right. It doesn't even matter. Even like they don't even stand firm. And then they don't really have really any articulation. 
there's no ankle pivot for real. They're very hard to point down and, uh, you know, to articulate the foot down or something. If you were to do like an enziguri or something like that, it gets very loose very quickly. I have so many John Cena's, so all of mine are constantly falling down, taking plummets off the shelf. It's just not a good mold, man. I need to make a whole video ranting about that shoe mold right there. But not only did they do this man dirty here with the shoe mold, they also did this man dirty in the body department, man. This man is not this chunky, man. He's not this chunky. I'd say he's in pretty damn good shape. He's a pretty muscular guy. And I would say that, you know, they, they shouldn't have done this to him, man. They did him a little dirty here. You know, I like this body mold for, you know, future installments. I'd like to see this body mold used on other guys. But in terms of Tony D'Angelo, I don't think this was the right move here. I do like the addition of the cloth goods shirt and everything. But I don't know, man. I don't think that this really works for him. And I think that they could have been better off using a different mold of some sort. Hell, even the Sandman or the Sergeant Slaughter torso probably would have worked fine. You know, it would have definitely been more accurate. And they, I mean, I guess you, if you look at it like this, like look at Tony D'Angelo. I'm going to pull them up side by side. Had they used the Sandman, to, and I don't know this to be fact. They could, maybe they pivoted, maybe they didn't. They put these figures in the same exact wave, right? Did they make a new leg mold and change this figure up just so it wouldn't be the exact same formula as Sandman? Like look at the figures, man. I I mean, you could say, like, look at these two figures. You could say that they're virtually the exact same figure. They're just a little bit changed. Like, Sandman's torso could probably go on Tony D'Angelo. This old sweatpant mold, they have this new sweatpant mold, but I think they probably could have went with that Mankind Shane McMahon legs or something like that. I'm glad we have a new sculpt. I'm just saying they would have been on the exact same formula had they not implemented these things. So that's definitely an interesting thing to take a look at. But Tony D'Angelo looks good with all of his cloth goods, his hat. He has cool accessories. This is a cool figure. I do like it and everything like that. But we do have the last figure in the set. And the last figure in the set is going to be Trish Stratus. Now, this has been the best Trish Stratus possibly they've ever made. And we saw it on display at WrestleMania 40 at the Superstore. But here, we only get three images. And I don't know what's going on here. We only have three images. We have a men on card shot. We have an image of the back of the packaging. And we have a side image of just her, you know, her, you know, her studio shot or whatever on the side of the box with the series number. And that's it. We don't get anything else, man. So, I don't know. We don't have any loose images of the Trish Stratus, which is definitely an interesting thing. I don't know what happened on that regard. But this is a good-looking figure. I was excited for it when I saw it at WrestleMania. It's a very good figure of Trish Stratus. And I think, like I stated before, it could be her best figure ever. The hair looked good and everything. And I'll try to find an image of, of that Trish on display at Mania so you can at least see what that looks like side-by-side -side with the men on card. But I will say, in the men on card image, the head sculpt doesn't look as good as it did at WrestleMania, but it could just be the angle. You know, anytime you get a, a men on card image from far away, it's not, you know, zoomed in. Like, it's not in person. I don't have a good loose image of it. Kind of hard to judge, right? So it looked much better, I think, on display at WrestleMania, and that could be one of those things. You know, we've seen that with Roman Reigns. I didn't like the way it looked at, at WrestleMania and then we get more picks, things develop, I get it in hand, it looks a lot better, repaint it, looks even better again, so there's different levels to that, but that is the last figure in the set, it is Trish Stratus, but that is your full WWE Elite Series 111, ton of stuff to discuss, man, we have two first time of the lines in here, we have three veterans of the line, we have another female talent that is a very well received female talent that's gonna have an updated figure that is well, just very much needed because she's only had like the same figure over and over when you regard her Hall of Fame figure, her uh, WrestleMania Elite that was, you know, a lot of people didn't like that figure. So having this updated Trish is certainly something that people are going to be interested in. But Elite 112, not far behind. I'm sure that we will probably see that on display in its full entirety. Or hell, we may even, I mean, that is a month away. San Diego Comic-Con is, I think it's like 28 days or something like that. Always like four weeks from now, we will be there in San Diego covering everything, doing the walkthrough, talking about everything. So that should be fun. But maybe, I, I just can't wait. I can't wait. They're going to, you know, they always go all out for Comic-Con. And I feel like they went all out for Mania. But it's going to be even more nuts at San Diego Comic-Con as we go out there and see what's up. And we'll, of course, be covering everything here on the channel as we discuss it, man. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap up the news of WWE Elite Series 111, man. I'd love to know what you guys think of everything down in the comment section below. How do you feel about everything that I mentioned in this video? The Johnny Gargano Syndrome, the John Cena shoe mold, the different things. I know that I'm probably overly passionate about some of these things, man, but I don't know. I, I think that these things matter, man. I think these are improvements that they can make to the line, so I definitely wanted to discuss them here on the channel, man, but I'm getting the hell out of here. Huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellows over there. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you so much for your guys' support. I appreciate every single one of you so very much, man, but I'm getting the hell out. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.